Hello and welcome to What's Treading with Tire Review. My name is David, I'm your host, and today we are talking about retreads with John Cox. He is the head of Retread Truck Tires Americas at Continental. Let's get to the interview. John, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I, I wanna dive right into uh, this news from Continental uh, that we got late last year uh, about you celebrating your 120th year of retreading. Um, that's, that's phenomenal. Uh, that's, that's an incredible amount of time to be doing anything. Um, can you kind of break down for us, you know, what is the difference between retreading now here in 2024 and when Continental got started 120 years ago? Well, you know, I think the, the first thing that you got to think about is what tires were running at the time. Mm -hmm. And so you were talking about bias tires. So the retreading, uh, you know, the, the technology of bias tire retreading is much, much different than the technology of uh, retreading a radial tire. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit lighter, a little... Um, uh, a little less durable, um, all those sort of things. Uh, but probably the biggest changes that we've had within the retread processes are um, the inspection processes that we have today versus then, uh, where you were looking mainly visual inspections. Now you have serography machines that are mm -hmm. uh, looking at the any kind of air pockets within the inside of the tire. Uh, you have non-destructive electrical inspections that are looking for penetrations that aren't necessarily caught throughout a uh, uh, a visual inspection. And then there's a whole lot of less manual work, right? I'm not carrying a tire from station to station. Most of the, the retread facilities now have a very nice monorail system in place uh, to transport the tires. The machinery is automated, so instead of having to figure out the radiuses for the buff, you're basically pushing a button and buffing a tire, mm. or you are building a uh, tire with a you know several little steps rather than it being a craftsman type process. And so there's there's a whole lot of changes just from the technology standpoint. The final thing to, to think about is the role of computers that we've had within the retreading process mm. and being able to actually identify uh, casings, uh, specifications set forth by the fleets uh, that are sitting there, um, all of those type of things. And then all the reporting that we have coming back from the retread process uh, to tell us what's good, what's bad, how things are running um how things are going and exactly where it's at within the process whereas boy you didn't have any of that probably even 30 years ago maybe 40 sure. years ago <laughs> i know when i first got into the industry we were first we were we were uh, we were talking about it we were starting to get into uh the, the barcode tracking but most folks were just putting everything on cards and it wasn't it hasn't been since the last 20 years that you started getting into the computerization of that. Mm -hmm. And then the deep da data dives that you're getting nowadays that, that makes things a heck of a lot more interesting, right? Oh my God, yeah, yeah. Uh, barcode tracking, can you just kind of break down a little bit what that means to those who might not be aware? Sure, so uh, generally your, um, your tire dealer is gonna uh, track the uh, tire, the casing that they're uh, picking up with a barcode. They'll put a basically a sticker onto the side of the tire. Some people have some different technologies. I've seen uh, laser and printing, but it's a way to give a unique ID to that individual tire that they are picking up. That ID then follows that tire all the way through the retread process from the time that they are uh, putting it onto the back of their truck to the time that they get it to the store. Many of the retread facilities are miles upon miles upon miles away from the store that's actually servicing the fleet location. Uh, that, that retread barcode will make it to the retread plant, go through all the different stations within the retread process, and usually have a some sort of label that they print off at the end of the uh, process, which includes that original barcode that they had. Uh, so that they can have tracking all all the way back until the time it gets back to the fleet facility. That's amazing. I can't I can't imagine what uh, you know what advancement that has given to uh, the industry for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Do you, do you happen to have any data on just how many tires Continental has retreaded in its history? Uh, in its history, 
I, I couldn't tell you. I do know that we do over a million retreads a year worldwide. Okay. Um, we, we have uh, a few facilities within uh, Europe that are very large or Stuken facility. In Hanover, we have another facility in England that are both doing hot retreads. And then our cold process is throughout the world as well. So we do over a million retreads worldwide a year. Wow. Since uh, since the beginning of the time, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine some of that data is probably lost to history. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, commercial tire sales, when looking at 2023, um, you know, in the U.S., commercial tire sales were down a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Would you say that retreads were affected in the same way as your typical, you know, new commercial tire? We saw, so at Continental, we did see a, a, a little bit of a downward turn for the retreading market. It wasn't, it wasn't severe, but it was a downturn, mm -hmm. uh, just like we saw in the replacement tire. Um, it, I would suppose to be expected, it's going to follow, right? Fleets are not going to change their purchasing habits to buy a more expensive product uh, in bad times. They, they tend to buy, you know, uh, what is a better buy for them. And in most cases, that's going to be a retread. And so, sure. but the market was down overall last year. And how about for, uh, you know, looking forward uh, for the rest of 2024, um, do you have any expectations as to how the retread market might be? Yeah, in 2024, we expect the retread, mar the retread market to be up. We re expect replacement tires to be up as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it might lag a little bit. We may be a couple of quarters before we start seeing some of the benefits. I think this year we're seeing a uh, more traditional um, early year slump, um, which has, you know, traditionally since I've been in the, the uh, industry has, you know, used to be the, the case that, January, February, and March, when well, that was a good time to take a vacation uh, because then it was going to get super busy starting in the late spring into the summer all the way through the um, end of the year. And I think we'll probably see the same sort of uh, uh, pattern this year. Okay. Uh, we do expect it to be up, though. Fantastic. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, no, so, you know, obviously retreading and the benefits of doing so, very well documented uh, from the fleet's point of view. Um, what about from the tire dealer's point of view? What is the benefit of a tire dealer helping to suggest to their fleet customers, hey, they need to get into retreading? Yeah, so, you know, the way I look at it is uh, from a fleet manager's point of view, and, and I did manage a relatively complex fleet at one point. Um, and the way I looked at it then was, is what was my material cost per tire and what was my service cost per tire? And the way I got that was I would just add how much I spend in new tires and how much I spend in retreads each year and divided that by the number of tires that I built or the number of tires that I purchased. And I gave me a material cost per tire. And then I do the same for all my service items that were there. And so what I found is, is that the service provider and, and also the manufacturer is going to set the floor to that. Right. And so, mm -hmm. I, as a fleet manager, I'm going to set the ceiling. So if I have a program that's not optimized, I'm going to be spending a lot more on my material cost per tire. I probably will be spending a lot more on my service cost per tire. Mm -hmm. um, what I want to do is lower those down. Now, there's there's other factors that I'm going to, to play into that whenever I'm looking at a purchasing uh, reliability of service how often you can come. There, there's quite a few other things that I'm looking at as a fleet manager. Uh, but overall, I've, I've got to be able to make a, um, a wise decision on my purchasing uh, in order to keep my fleet on the road and keep my, with my, um, my um, cost per mile down. Mm -hmm. And so as a tire dealer, I need to be a partner to those fleets and I need to be having the same conversations because I'm the expert. Um, sure. I'm expecting to go in and um, be the trusted advisor to that fleet so that I can show them the correct way to lower those costs overall so that my ceiling of costs aren't going too high, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that that w with a retread process in, in hand and when you're manufacturing your own retreads, you have a vested interest in, in delivering the best quality retreads that you can. And you have, the best, you have a vested interest in it as well uh, talking to the fleet manager in the the right 
purchasing decisions in order to lower their overall cost per mile as well. Yeah, I think that makes a ton of sense. I mean, the the value of that relationship uh, cannot be overstated, I feel. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I, I would completely agree. I think you're spot on there. Um, I do want to mention this because this was this this kind of blew my mind a little bit in the uh, marketing materials that uh, were sent to us from Continental in uh, informing us that you would hit 120 years of retreading. Uh, Continental said that approximately 70% of truck and bus tires were considered retreadable in 2022. Um, that, that number kind of blows my mind. Um, and I'm sure far fewer uh, tires were actually retreaded. So, you know, tell me kind of what kind of factors uh, get, are, are these fleets and these tire dealers looking for in a tire that can be retreaded? Yeah, so so from a continental point of view, we have the 3G casing, and that 3G casing is a consistent casing amongst all of our product or many of our product lines. And so that allows us to have a very durable casing with very, mm -hmm. very uh, specific retread requirements. The radius is going to be basically the same. The tread width is going to be basically the same. Mm -hmm. The casing itself is basically the same. It's just characteristics of the tire and the tread are a little bit different as a new tire. And so that really allows us to, to um, push forward on the retreading, the retreadability of casings. I think casings in general have gotten better from every manufacturer, not just Continental, but every manufacturer's casings have to, to be able to be a retreadable asset for that fleet uh, because fleets are demanding it. And, um, you know, few things within their, uh, the Continental process itself that inspection we talked about way back when we were talking about how retread has um, changed over the, the previous years, that, that inspection process allows us to, to really get into the casing and know what's happened in that casing and make some good predictive models of whether or not that casing is going to be retreadable or not. And in Continental also, from a Continental point of view, we also have a high pressure test at the end of our process so that we can ensure that Anything that gets through the process is going to be a safe and reliable retread when it gets mounted on and aired up and goes onto the tire. Hmm. Uh, but the the data that we have that we've talked about in the past, we're able to see that, that the um, the pressure systems, fleets being a little bit more cognizant of keeping air into the tire, that keeps the retreads better. And the overall inspection is going to keep the, the retread better as well. When it comes to that inspection process, how much of that, I mean, you, you spoke a little bit about this earlier, but, you know, how much mm -hmm. of that inspection is done by computers and how much of that is done manually by a person actually inspecting that tire? So, so the initial inspection, so we, we do do a visual inspection within the casing. And so it's a seven step inspection. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll look at the crown, the two side walls inside of the, the, um, the bead, left side of the bead and then the inside of the shoulder and the inside other shoulder is a seven step inspection. Uh, that's done visually. And then, but then the computers kind of take over and we do an electrical test of the casing. Uh, the chirography is going to uh, be another uh, uh, electrical test or electronic test that, that's actually viewing the uh, casing from the inside and out uh, with cameras and lasers and all those, those gadgets that you talk about in the movies. Uh, it's a really great technology. It's been around for years. I think it was developed for the space shuttles back in the days wow. of uh, trying to figure out how to uh, identify uh, the, the tiles that were uh, defective on the space shuttles. And so the chirography <laughs> basically uh, uh, takes a look at any kind of movement within the tire that you wouldn't necessarily be able to see. That's not visual. That's electronic inspection. It doesn't require an operator to today look at it, although in, in our uh, technologies, we're looking at how to take the operator out of that and make computer simulated models to be able to just yay, say yay or nay without interpretation of that uh, as it goes through. Uh, so, so those are a couple of things. I think also there is a manual process of destructive inspection once we get into the sky. Hmm. Uh, but the other Manual process of inspection is every operator within a retread facility is an inspector, right? Regardless of what they're doing. Hmm. And so 
we got to have eyes on that tire all the way through. And, and I would say uh, Continental has a, a wonderful process for retreading tires. But retreads in general, um, the, the amount of technology that goes into making any brand of retread is amazing. It's tr truly astounding. And the technology is really in that inspection process. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, that, I mean, I think you're right. I mean, every operator, no matter what they're doing, that they need to be considering themselves an inspector of that tire. I mean, if if they're being able to visually see that tire, it makes a lot of sense that, you know, they need to be able to raise their hand and say, hey, there might be an issue here. Um, That's so right. I, I want to bring up one last thing, and that is that Continental says it aims to recover 60% of materials from used tires by 2050. So um, mm -hmm. I, I was hoping that maybe you could speak a little bit to what that circular economy means to Continental. What are the benefits? What are the challenges to being able to uh, accomplish that goal? And then, you know, how yep. much of that uh, comes from retread tires and, and what you're doing there and how much of that comes from kind of the replacement tire market? Yeah, so, I mean, our ambitious goal is to increase our, our use of sustainable materials of our, in our tire products, uh, excuse me, to 100% by 2050. Um, recycled raw materials contributed significantly to achieve this goal, right? Mm -hmm. And so first step is the retreading process in general, right? And so um, being able to retread a tire more than once, uh, twice, uh, three, four, however many times is going to play a major role into that sustainability that we want to do, the sustainability goals that we have. Uh, but we're also looking into how do we retread a car tire, right? And so we, we talk about retreading today. Uh, it's generally synonymous with truck tires or waste tires or uh, large construction tires. We have many projects that are going on into passenger tire retreading as well. And I think that will become a, a very, very large market sector as uh, possibly the, the uh, passenger tire uh, sector changes a bit and we start looking at fleets getting into uh, how to uh, uh, main, maintain and manage cars and much like fleets and trucking companies fleets and passenger cars are going to need the same type of retreading and the same type of device so that's another area that we're looking into hmm. um, recycled rubber from our end of use tires is, is another place that we're looking at and that's what that's a lot of technology that's going into it there's a, uh, uh, a process that we're, we're getting big into, and I had to actually look up how to say this word because it's one of those words that you only think about how it's uh, uh, when you're reading it on a piece of paper and you're in these projects. Uh, but the, it's the uh, pyrolysis of okay. uh, process. And uh, we're looking at that. It's mainly oil, gas, and carbons. Uh, are recovered from the end of use tires and being able to be used back into our processes as well. And so we've had some partners. There's a prior in industries that we've um, partnered with um, that we are getting into that and looking at our valuable raw materials and how that does, um, how that will also be a part of our sustainability processes as well. And so lots of great uh, things that are going on with the uh, sustainability. It's it's one of those those areas that we feel is a choice. Continental looks at it as we're choosing to be a sustainable company, and this is something we're. It's not a um, it's not a market driven idea. It's it's something that, that our employees are demanding. It's something our customers are demanding, mm -hmm. but we're demanding it of ourselves, and we're one of the market leaders, I believe, in this. And boy, the, the amount of projects that I'm involved in, words I can't pronounce oftentimes <laughs> are, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's real exciting to, to see the next, you know, 120 years of, of uh, retreading and not just retreading, but recycling of those tires in general. That is fantastic. I, I do have one follow-up question for you on, mm -hmm. on the topic of retreading passenger car tires. I think that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's a really interesting endeavor how what historically has been i guess the the biggest challenge to doing that is, is it the integrity of the casing isn't isn't built to begin with to kind of withstand those same sorts of pressures and and kind of tribulations that you would have to give a commercial tire to retread that what what's kind of been the hiccup i guess in the past 
Yeah, I think I think when you take a look at the um, the durability of those casings, they're they're made to uh, run much higher um, mm -hmm. speeds. Uh, they're made to be um, um, way lighter on the load in order, you know, but that, that those trade-offs that you have uh, make the tire a little bit less durable uh, yeah. in the end for retreading. And so if we have 70% that could be retreaded on the commercial side, but only 30%, I'm just throwing out a number, maybe it's 40%, maybe it's 50% mm -hmm. that can only be retreaded within the passenger side. Well, that's a little bit harder business case to make. Sure. Um, because you have the logistics of moving those tires to a retread facility, you have all the, the different um, uh, business models that are out there that you, that you have to kind of work around to be able to see, does this make sense? Mm -hmm. And we used to. I mean, this is not something that we didn't used to do. We had retreading for passenger tires. As a matter of fact, I had a flat tire in the uh, right after I got my driver's license, I don't want to say it wasn't the 1920s. I'm not going to say the decade <laughs> it was because I'm getting a little old. Uh, but the uh, first time I'd ever heard of a retread was a uh, tow truck driver telling me that he wasn't going to sell me a retread for my uh, passenger tire. And I'd never even heard of it. And he explained the retread process to me, and I was fascinated at that Interesting. point. It was uh, surprising that probably less than 10 years later, I was in the retread industry, obviously on the um, on the, the um uh, bigger tires rather than the passenger tires. But I think that that, uh, that alone tells you that there's some opportunities sitting out there. And mm -hmm. as, uh, as consumers demand um, recyclability and the sustainability, just like companies are demanding that, it's, it's going to be a hot topic. And you have to invest now in order to get into it, right? It's, it's not something that you can just turn, pull the trigger and say, we're ready to go. Uh, with a month's notice. It's, it's something that takes time, effort, and energy, and R&D money, and all the other things that are, that are involved uh, to putting a market out, a marketable product out there. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I mean, as you know very well, uh, retreading is a very complicated process, but it needs to be to, you know, ensure safety and, you know, ensure efficiency and all those things. That's right. Uh, well, well, John, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, th this has been a really fascinating topic for me, and I really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Take care. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, well, clearly the need for retread tires is not going anywhere. Congratulations to Continental Tire on 120 years of retreading. That's phenomenal. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.